Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about one of the more popular vices we sell, the Peak Rotary Vise. We'll cut into it, do a little unboxing so you see what comes with it. We'll cover the features from top to bottom and talk a few pros and cons. That way you can decide if this might be a good fit for the type of fly tying you like to do. All right, we got a lot to cover, let's get started. All right, before we get started, if you don't know me, my name is Matt. I'm the manager of the Northern Angler here in Traverse City, Michigan. We're a small independent fly shop and we really enjoy getting our customers confident and comfortable on the water and at the vise. Most of our channel is focused on Midwest and Great Lakes fly fishing, but we also do a lot of fly tying product videos, things like that. And we're a little bit newer to YouTube. So think about hitting that subscribe button down below and the notification bell. That lets you know whenever we have a new video out. If this video was helpful, if this information was useful to you, also think about hitting that thumbs up button that helps other people find these videos. One last thing before we get started, I've gone ahead and time stamped everything down below. So if for any reason you need to jump ahead and get right to a piece of information, you can do so. The Peak Rotary Vice has been a very popular item at our shop for the past few years. Now it doesn't have a fancy name like a sword from Game of Thrones or anything, but that's because Peak really only makes one basic rotary vise. If you want to get real technical, this is the PRV G2 we're talking about today. That's the pedestal base version. There's also a C-clamp if you prefer. We just got a fresh shipment of these at the shop, so I thought it'd be fun to cut into one of these and see exactly how it'll show up for you and what steps you need to take to put it together. Right away when you hold this box, you can tell there's some significant weight to the pedestal base, which is really exciting. You can take a look, these vices are made right in the USA, and on the side they actually have their address in Loveland, Colorado. I also really like their little tagline they have printed on the side here, designed and built for professionals, priced for everyone. I think that's kind of funny, so. All right, let's open her up. And right away, I have to laugh because I think Peak might be the only company that I deal with at the shop, and I deal with a fair amount, that still uses packing peanuts. Maybe they have a surplus of them, I don't know, but it might be worth having your vacuum ready because these things still are a pain. They stick to everything. Ugh, I hope they can move on from this soon. First thing here is your base. That thing is chunky, that's awesome. Listen to that. Next piece is your vice head. All right, here's a quick tip. You might not be able to tell, but this thing is coated. I tr try and keep a towel on hand when we're opening one of these up at the shop because they are, they are slick and full of oil and it will stain stuff. So try and wipe that down before we start to put this thing together. First, we're gonna use the Allen wrench included in the packaging to make sure your stem is securely fastened to the base. Next, we're gonna take the tension screw and thread it into the bottom of the brass hub. This will help control the rotary function of your vise. Last, you'll need to work the bobbin cradle into the stem clamp. Now this can take some elbow grease, but don't overwork it because you could end up bending the cradle. Now that we got this thing all put together and functioning perfectly, let's talk about the features. First of all, the pedestal base. This thing is awesome and chunky. It's a six by six white square and it weighs in right around five pounds, which when you compare it with a lot of other vices out there in the industry is wonderful, especially if you're a heavy handed tire and you like to use thread tension, really lash on some materials like bucktail and things like that. If we look close at this base, you're gonna see three holes that give you different mounting options for your stem. This is a really nice feature for those long marathon sessions at the desk and really help you dial in that comfortable position for your vise. 
There's also a nice recessed area in the middle of this space that'll help you keep things you're working with right at hand, like beads, hooks, things that tend to disappear very easily on my desk. Okay, moving on to the stem. This is pretty standard. It measures out to about seven and a half inches. I will mention if you do have a shorter desk you're working with, Peak makes a riser accessory that'll allow for an extra inch and three quarters and adds a little bit more mass into that base assembly. Once we get up to the head assembly, you'll see your jaws are pressed into the rotary element and they meet together with the stem through a brass hub. This brass hub also has a spot where your tension screw will be located on the bottom. This allows you to control how fast and smooth you can rotate this vise. The jaws are significant in a good way here. They're not dainty, they can handle a big hook if you need it, and they're adjusted for different sizes with a nut down by the cam. The cam, I should mention, is nice and large and easy to operate, and even features a positive lock system so you know that your jaws are not gonna slip. Last but certainly not least is the bobbin cradle. This is a really important but usually underappreciated piece of your vise until you need to use that rotary function. So don't just put it in the box or on your shelf because it tends to disappear for a lot of people. Peak has done a kind of a cool thing and actually incorporated their logo, a mountain design, into their bob and cradle. And it also has the Peak name right on there. It's a nice little touch. Next, I wanna talk about some pros and cons, but before we jump right into that, I need to preface this by saying, these are my personal opinions. They're not even necessarily the opinions of all the shop staff. This is just my opinion after using this vise on and off for a few years. It's a great vise. Every vise out there is going to have pros and cons, and that's why we do this, so that you can find out if the pros match up with what you want or if the cons really outweigh everything and you need to look somewhere else. So let's jump right in. The pros, number one is this pedestal base. Let me tell you, I've tied on a lot of vices over the years and it's really, really nice to have a large, square, heavy base. This is twice as heavy as some of the other vices I tie on and it really makes a difference if you're a heavy-handed tire or just someone who uses a little bit more thread tension because you like tying with bucktail or difficult materials. Number two is the very large cam that they use and that positive lock. It's just so easy when you're tying tons and tons of flies. It's a comfortable cam. Other cams that are a little bit narrower will actually eat in your thumb when you're trying to use lots of tension. And other vices out there don't offer that lock in, that flat spot there so that you know everything's locked in. And you can actually over tighten on other vices really easy, which diminishes the life of your jaws. Number three has to be the great value here. At time of filming here, this is $164.95, when a lot of other vices out there are right around $200 for a standard rotary vise. Now, remember, things are subject to change and prices tend to go up. So this may change if you're watching this down the line years later, it may be a little bit more expensive, but right now, awesome value. Number four, but the great accessories Peak offers for this vise. You've got waste baskets, you got the riser, you got all sorts of cool things to customize and personalize your vise to make it really comfortable and fit your needs exactly. Now let's talk about cons. Like I said, every vise is gonna have some things you don't love. So number one has to be the rotary function. It just could be a little bit smoother. And I'll show you here, when you do not have that tension screw set just right, and you reach the apex of that rotation with the standard arm, it can jump forward, and this can really affect your tying if you're using delicate materials like soft hackles. Now, of course, they make an accessory that you can buy that will help solve this problem called the D-arm, and we recommend it to everyone purchasing this vise, but if you use tons of delicate materials, you need to consider how smooth this rotary function is. Number two is fit and finish of this vise, and by that I just mean the ease of use for certain pieces. First thing that stands out is the bobbin cradle. It's difficult to adjust, it's a pain if you're using different fly and hook sizes all the time. If you're just using the same same setting all the time, easy peasy. But if you're a tire that likes to jump around a lot, you're gonna notice it, it's gonna be a pain. 
On that same note, the adjustment nut that controls the width of those vice jaws can be a little too easy to adjust. So you can fly right past the setting you need in either direction, and it can take a little bit longer to dial exactly the tension you need in. Number three, the jaws are just not my first choice for tying smaller flies. When I say smaller flies, I mean anything 16 and smaller, you're going to have some trouble just because these jaws are a little bit chunky. So if you're a dry fly angler or a midge tire, it's something to consider. You know, in Michigan here, we're lucky enough, a lot of our mayflies and other dry flies are fairly large. We're spoiled. We got things like the hex, right? So this vice is great for Michigan and the Midwest. But if you're out west, you're tying tons of midges, you're going to want to look at a vise with a different set of jaws that are a little bit more delicate. And number four, unfortunately, even though they look really cool, these brass pieces have a tendency to tarnish. Now, if that doesn't bother you, you know, if you're not taking glamour shots all the time, who cares? They're going to function just fine. If they do matter to you, know that you're going to have to polish it up, get some lemon and uh, was it baking soda? I think there's a probably a hundred YouTube videos on how to polish this thing up, but just know down the line, those thumbprints, your oils from your hands are going to tarnish the brass pieces. Okay, that's it for us today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. The Peak Rotary Vice is available at thenorthernangler.com. And if you're unable to buy it from us, that's okay. Just try and buy it maybe from a small, independent, local shop. They need your support just as much as we do. If you have more questions, things maybe I forgot to cover, or you just want to tell us your experience with the Peak Rotary Vice, use the comment section right down below or reach out to us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, or call us at the shop or email us. There's a ton of ways to get a hold of us right down below and we're always around willing to help. Last thing, if you haven't done so, think about hitting that subscribe button, the notification bell, and the thumbs up. Helps us out and it helps other people find our content. Okay, everyone, hope to see you all very soon in the shop or out on the water. <laughs>